Good morning. We are working on 2-6 today, adding and subtracting unlike fractions. So in the last section, we added and subtract, subtracted fractions that have the same denominators. We just add or subtract the top numbers, keep the bottom number. Anybody? Anybody? The same. Okay, they're not listening to me. Listen to me. I'm teaching. Okay. So then when we have unlike fractions, what that means is the denominators are not the same. So we cannot add and subtract fractions that have unlike denominators. What we have to do is make the denominators the same, and then we can add or subtract. Okay? So I'm going to show you how to do that today, and then we're going to have another video next week that's really great at explaining this as well by Mr. Math Antics. And it's going to help you. So make sure you watch all of the videos. because They are the most helpful thing for you, okay? Copy these notes down, and then we'll be right back with some examples. So when we are adding or subtracting unlike fractions, that means the denominators are not the same. And I can clearly see that these denominators are different. I have to make the denominators the same so I can add or subtract. So what I do is I make this little table that you see on the side. And in the first row, I just write the number, the original number that I'm trying to change. So my original numbers are going to be 4 and 6 on this problem because I have a 4 on the bottom and a 6 on the bottom. So the original number goes in the top. Then I start multiplying each number to find a least common denominator. Now the least common denominator is a number that you can multiply both of these numbers to equal. Okay, they both will eventually equal the same number is what that means. So let's do one, and I think you'll understand a little more as we do some more examples. So don't panic yet, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do in the first row is multiply them by 2. What is 4 times 2? 8. 8. And what is 6 times 2? Yes, so I have 8 and 12. Then I'm going to multiply by 3. What is 4 times 3? 4 times 3 is 15. Nope, try again. Cameron, 4 times 3? 12. 12. And what is 3 times 6? That's as far as we need to go. We actually... 18, good. We actually are done. We could stop right now because we already found the least common denominator, but I'm going to do a few more numbers to, for you to see what this is like. So what is 4 times 4 now? 8. No. 16. And 4 times 6? Twenty-four, yes. Okay, so we're going to stop right there. What I'm looking for when I'm trying to find the LCD is I'm looking for a number in each column to match. Do you see a match? Cameron, yes. Twelve is our match. I see a twelve in this column and a twelve in that column. That is going to be my least common denominator. So now... I'm going to write that on the bottom and make two new fractions with whatever sign was in the middle of my original problem. Okay? But now I have to look at what did I multiply the 4 by to get 12? So come over here to the table again. What did I multiply the 4 by? 3. 3. So if I multiplied the bottom of the fraction by 3, guess what? I have to multiply the top by 3 as well. So what is 3 times 3? 
Three times three. Three times three. Nine. There we go. Okay. So now I've made a new fraction, but it is equivalent or equal to three fourths. It is just a different version of three fourths. Okay. They both mean the same amount. Nine twelfths is the same as three fourths. And I know that because I multiplied the bottom and top by the same number, the threes. Okay. Now let's go to the six column. What did I multiply six by to get 12? Two. Two. So whatever I multiply the bottom by, I have to do to the top as well. So what is one times two? Two. two. So now I have a new fraction on this side, two twelfths, that is equal to one sixth. Okay, they show the same amount, God bless you. They just look different. God bless you. So now we're going to be able to add them. Why can we add these fractions now? Cameron? That's right. 9 plus 2 is 11, and you keep the bottom number the same so the 12 stays on the bottom. But why were we able to add those now? Because... Um, it's true. Because they have the same denominator. So now we can easily add or subtract. Okay? Um, this is just one problem. So make sure you copy all of this down. Pause the video, and then I'm going to come back and do another example for you. Okay, here's number six. We skipped number five on purpose because I want to show you a little bit more challenging problems so that when you're on your own, you could do the easier ones better. So this problem, the first thing I'm going to do is say, do they have like denominators? Do they? Uh, they, have to be on they do but. not. So I'm going to write the original denominators in the top of my chart. Whatever's on the bottom, that's what goes in your first boxes on your chart. Now... We're going to multiply them by 2, by 3, by 4, by 5, until we find a common denominator, a number that's the same in both columns. So what is 2 times 7? We have 2 times 7 is 14. 14. Okay. And 2 times 5? 10. 10. How about 3 times 7? Is 21. I'm going to do some of these because of the video. I don't want to take too much time. Um, and then 3 times 5, you should know this. Yes, good. And do I have a match yet? No. Okay, keep going. 4 times 7. 28. And then 4 times 5. 20, good. Do I have a match yet? No. No. How about 5 times 7? Thirty-five. And how about five times five? Twenty-five. Okay. And how about six times seven? Six times seven is forty-two. How about six times five? Thirty-five. Not yet. Thirty. Do I have a match yet? No. Oh, this is a long one. Sometimes you get long ones and that's okay. So what is 7 times 7? Seven? 49 and 7 times 5? 35. Do I have a match? Yeah. Okay, if I didn't have a match, I would have to draw more boxes on my little table and keep going. But I have a match. What's my match? 35. I see 35 in this column and 35 in this column. So guess what my new denominator is? 35. 35. So I'm going to, oh my goodness, I got a highlighter. Hold on. So I'm going to write my new numbers on the bottom. And then I'm going to deal with all these negatives because there's a lot of negatives going on in this problem. So the one that's on the front 
I'm just going to bring down. But what happens to these two negatives that are right next to each other? They turn each other positive. So I'm going to write 1 plus in the middle. Now, I have to write my new um, numerators. Sorry, my brain was taking a vacation. I have to write my new numerators on top now. What did I multiply 7 by to get 35? 35. What did I multiply 7 by to get 35? 5. So if I multiplied the bottom by 5, I have to do what? Make it to the top as well. Oh, hold on, because the 4 has a different number. What did I multiply this 5 by to get 35? Oh, yeah. Um, seven. 7. So now I'm multiplying this one by 7. And what is 4 times 7? 1. And it goes 4, 8, 4 times 7 is 28. So my new numerator on that side is 28. That's a big one. But guess what? Now I can add and subtract because my denominators are the same. So negative 5 plus 28. What does that equal? Negative, negative 5 and a positive 28. Mm -mm. Because I have a negative 5 and a positive 28. The signs are different, so I have to subtract 23. And the answer is going to be positive because 28 is bigger. And the, new, the denominator is what? What's my bottom number? 35. Because the denominator stays the same. All right, copy that one down. We'll be right back with one more. All right, for number eight, we have mixed numbers. That means we have a big number and a fraction together. So we have to change it to what? Do you remember what it's called? We have to change them to improper fractions before we can solve. So how do I do that? Ooh, not yet, actually. I will do that in a minute, but first we're going to change these to improper fractions. So remember when I multiply the bottom number by the big number? What's 8 times 3? 8 times 3. It's 24. Plus 5. What's 24 plus 5? Good. 29, keep the bottom number the same for now. And then we're going to do the same thing to 1 and 1 third. What is 3 times 1? 3. 3 plus, plus one, 1 is 4. 4, awesome. Four. And keep the bottom number the same for now. Then, now, I'm going to put my 8 and 3 in the chart. Yes, Cameron. Yes. What do you mean? Like talk me through it? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Hold on. You gotta be quick though, because I am running out of time on my okay. video. So two times eight is sixteen. Yep. And then two times three is six. Good. Keep going. Now that now eight times three is twenty-four. Four. Yep. And then three times three. Three times three is nine. Mm -hmm. And four times eight is thirty-two. And four times three is twelve. Good. What's four times eight? Thirty-two. Thirty-two. And five times eight is eight. Forty. That's right. Eight, eight, and eight. Ah, three times five is fifteen. Fifteen. No matches yet, so we keep going. Eight times six is forty-five. Forty-eight. Mm -hmm. And three times six. 